Today I'm with Alan Dawson. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm Irvin. I'm fine, thanks. Well, good to meet you again, Alan. And the subject matter for uh, this interview are the Grahams. Mm. So for the uninitiated, uh, Alan, what is a Graham? Uh, Graham is a hill in Scotland between 2,499 feet uh, in old units or between 610 and 761 metres. And, um, and it has, sorry, I only give half the definition and it has a drop of 150 metres or more all round. As far as the, um, the compilation of uh, the list, when did this occur and when was it published? Um, well, I had quite a complicated uh, a genesis, I suppose, um, because the Grahams are just a subset of the Marylands, uh, which I'd finished work on by about 89, um, but it didn't get published by Cicero Press until April 1992. Um, so the Marylands are all the um, British hills with 150 metres drop, so uh, Graham's are just you know, 224 out of 1542 as it was at the time, so not a particularly significant set, so I just wrote half a page about this uh, group of hills. Really. So that's when my first um, publication about them uh, came. Um, I had uh, many years before been aware of the, the fact that there wasn't a list when I got Munro's Tables for Christmas in 1986 because I looked through Munro's Tables and I struggled, couldn't find the definition of the Munro's which puzzled me greatly and I found the sort of Corbett so I understood that and made sense and I followed in the Donalds and I thought yeah but that's just southern Scotland so there's a big list of hills missing here isn't there? Where are they? <laughs> I thought I bought a book with pages missing or something so it was an obvious omission to me. Well um, that omission, it's quite interesting because over the, le the years leading up to um, your publication mm -hmm. of the Grahams, the 2,000 foot to 2,499 foot hills, they had been listed by one or two people, but not in a systematic way, I believe. Well, that's quite true because I had, I mean, I did a fair bit of research uh, for the Marlins because I wanted to give due recognition to those who'd gone before, like Munro and Corbett and so on. Um, and I'd seen references to Maxwell and I'd seen references to Doherty in some articles in SMC journals, but I just couldn't find anything out about these guys. There was nothing in the SMC publications. I looked in the libraries. So I knew Doherty a name, but I couldn't, so I didn't find his listing before the Relative Hills book came out. So it's just a name to me. But when I later saw what he'd done, in fact, it was a very systematic <laughs> listing um and a huge work and the smc seems to have not really done much with it it was privately published and only about 500 copies done yeah and was there somebody called dane love as well that yeah did, i uh... knew again just knew the name i think Evan butterfield had referred to it in a magazine article somewhere um but i'd not seen any listing i didn't have any contact details for him so as far as the grahams are concerned uh you mentioned that um uh, that came out in a tacit publication in um, when when were, when were they first published? Yeah, no, I didn't mention that actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got that far. <laughs> um, so they came out in the Relative Hills book in 1992, um, but they were just as a subset. So I didn't make much of them. I thought I'd uh, I did go as far as giving them a name because I knew the Corbetts and thought, well, these are just lesser Corbetts, really. The same sort of definition, just lesser or lower. So Lesser Corbett's abbreviate to LC, LCs. So that's why I call them LCs. It's not a very good name, but I did at least identify them as a subset of hills, but that's all. I didn't list them separately or anything. Um, so the, um, it was three years later before the Tacit Tables publication came out. So was that 1995? Yeah. Mm. Now, prior to that, there was also another publication, wasn't there? Yeah. And who was that by, and, and where, where did that appear? Well, you know very well who it was by. <laughs> it was uh, by a woman called Helen Torbert, also known as Fiona Torbert, also known as Fiona Graham. I don't think she's ever known as Helen Graham. Um, so I don't quite understand the Fiona-Helen thing. I only knew her as Fiona. Um, but she was referred to in some newspaper reports as Helen Torbert. Uh, and that's her name, you know. Um, so it was only when she submitted her listing of Scottish Hills to the great outdoors and they want to publish it and says oh you can't call them Torbett's it's far too similar to Corbett's so we have to call them something else and what's your maiden name 
Um, so that's how they, they call them to be called the Grahams. So it's probably Cameron and Nisha's fault that they're not called the Torbots, which would be absolutely perfect, <laughs> in my opinion. So when did they um, appear in TGO? Yeah, that was in November 92. So it's a, a slightly irritating that the way they presented it because um, they obviously the Relative Hills book had, had come out listing all the Marilyns, including the Grahams, and it had been reviewed and, and TGO and um, quite favourably by Anne Bowker, I think, and had a number of letters um, about it. And then when they, um, they published the Graham's listing six months later in November 92, they made out this is the first such listing of things to appear in print, you know, a big new initiative from TGO. And of course, it, it wasn't that at all. So when I challenged them about that, um, I don't know if it was uh, Cameron McNeish or Roger Smith who just said, ah, yes, but it's the first listing in its own right, you know, rather than the subset of the bigger list of hills. Which I guess was true. It hardly makes it a scoop. <laughs> so when did you know about the TGO uh, article with uh, with uh, Fiona's uh, Well, listing? I used to buy it uh, every month at that time, so, so I was really into it. So um, yeah, I got it since it came out in November '92. Now, I've actually never seen a copy of that article, or let alone the original. Oh, yes. Was it um, was it pertaining to be uh, a systematic listing or not? Um, it was semi-systematic. Um, in that it was fairly loosely defined. For a start, um, it covered only the Scottish Highlands, so there were no hills uh, in Donald Territory, south of the Central Belt, and it was slightly, um, well, quite muddily defined. So although um, 150 metres was the um, drop criterion, there's also a distance criterion of the highest point for around about two miles. So that's two points of vagueness. One, introducing distance, and secondly, about you know, two miles. So some pretty obscure hills got into that listing, um, which only had a drop of 50 metres or so. So you actually contacted TGO about it because well, of their no, claim? I, or? Um, I think there was contact details for um, Fiona herself. I can't remember if it was direct to her or via TGO. But anyway, I just thought, oh, this is interesting. I'll get in touch and see if we can collaborate. Um, so uh, I did uh, manage to get in touch with uh, Fiona and she was um, explained how the uh, listing came about uh, wasn't aware of uh, Marilyn's book so um, she was yeah, quite interested and willing to cooperate so we did. Just on a side subject then uh, Alan because a couple of questions was it sort of before email became standard as a form of communication? Yeah I was using email at the university where, where I worked but um, there was none of that no I just found it and what about where you both lived at that stage? Yeah, well, I moved to Glasgow in uh, 1989 and it turns out that she, she lived in a suburb of Glasgow called Busby. So, you know, about uh, six or seven miles away from where I was in Georgia at the time. Now, I know you met up. Um, who proposed the meeting? Uh, I can't remember exactly, to be honest, um, but uh, we agreed it'd be a good idea if uh, we got together. And so uh, she invited me around to her house, so I went around to her house. How often did you meet her? Uh, only two or three times. I went round to her house possibly twice, uh, maybe only once. Um, and of course I met her husband briefly, who was slightly bemused by this because he's not really interested in uh, <laughs> hill walking at all, um, and certainly not hill listing. So I got the impression she was quite frustrated. She didn't do as much walking as she would have liked. Uh, uh, but I met her once or twice uh, again in the Map Library at Glasgow University. You know, not by deliberate plan, just it's where we both gravitated to. So as far as uh, the meetings were concerned, did you sort of bring all notes and listings and compare? And Yeah, we did, we did a bit of that, yes. Um, so she was, um, I have to say, pretty open-minded, you know, she, um, and then quite enthusiastic. She said, oh, gosh, yes, you've done all this. Work. Oh, I see, yes. Oh, oh, you found that one. Oh, marvellous. Oh, I, how did you find that? I missed it. Oh, great, you know. Oh, I cannot, I, you know, I have such trouble looking at these maps, you know. So so she was, yeah, she was fine. I liked her. Well, before continuing on with that detail, I know um, through a recent posting on the IHB forum that you uh, asked the question that whether there were any other female list compilers. Outside of Fiona, yeah. and um, they are a, unfortunate. They are a rarity, aren't they? Yeah, I couldn't think of any others off, uh, offhand. Do you know of any others? There's the only one I could think of was um, Anne Nuttall with uh, with her husband yeah. John. Yes, it's, but yeah. whether Anne writes the guidebooks and John does the compilation of the list, I'm not too sure. No. So, but Fiona, in her own right, yeah. was um, 
you know, a very, very unusual for a female to uh, to get involved in, in this compilation. Yeah, especially uh, she hadn't actually climbed all that many hills. Um, and she certainly hadn't climbed many Grahams, uh, but she was keen skier, so uh, it's because she, I think, broke her leg skiing that she was laid up in hospital, or laid up at home, and that's when she started doing a listing because she broke her leg skiing. It was all by chance, really. So presumably, from the uh, the meetings that you had with her, was that then um, the culmination, was the decision to almost join forces and create one listing? Yeah, the deal was, I obviously thought my list was um, far more accurate than hers, which, um, which it was, but it was also more uh, comprehensive in that it covered southern Scotland as well, and it was more tightly defined because it just had the 150 metre drop criteria. Um, so I said, well, I, it'd be crazy to have two rival lists, you know, we just want one, I don't care what they're called, I just want it to be accurate. So she said, well, I quite like them to still be called Graham, so I said, fine, we'll use my list in your name. So that's, that's so it's very much a, yeah, a joint effort in that sense. Well, if I may say, uh, Alan, I, I think it's a very good suggestion mm -hmm. on your part there, and um, I know you very rarely um, want to put your name towards listings because you uh, you sort of come up with, with quite some unusual and um, some very good uh, good names for them. So yes, you know, a few dodgy ones as well. <laughs> Well, possibly we won't go down that route in this <laughs> no, interview. Not just now. <laughs> <laughs> so good on you for that, Alan. Um, as far as Fiona um, is, uh, is is concerned, um, how old was she at that time? She was Didn't 62. Remember? Was she 62? Yeah, and she only had lived for another year or two at most. Yeah. I think it was only another year or so. So presum presumably retired? Yes. Do you know what she did as a profession? No, I don't know. No, she probably told me what I can't remember. Do you know whether she'd compiled any other listings, or was it this the sort of first one that she'd... I think it's the only one. She certainly didn't mention any. Because even, even that, the first listing she, that she did, submitted to TGO and have it published, that's yeah. quite an achievement, isn't it? It is, yeah, and she, um, it wasn't just published in TGO. She had her own uh, listing of some you know, photocopied sheets, about 10 pages, and said to... which she gave a bit more information than when it was in TGO, and she offered to send it to anyone who got in touch. Uh, and quite a few people did, so she carried, continued to send that out for, for a while uh, afterwards because she had, you know, 100 or so copies made. So if we can now backtrack a little bit to the time framing of this. Yeah. TGO was published in 19... Uh, November 92. Yeah. 92. Mm -hmm. Relative Hills came out in... April 92. Yeah, so and a tacit publication with the Graham's listing came out... In uh, 95, yeah. 95. Yeah, so that was when we agreed to call them Grahams. So yeah. I thought it was a better name than LC, so I was happy with it. So at the time that you were meeting her, yeah. the two or three occasions, yeah. what what time of, um, what sort of year would that be about? Well, Any it would idea? only be um, during 93, I think, so because, you know, she she didn't live for long, so I think, in, I can't remember exactly when she disappeared, but uh, um, probably 94. Yeah. Yeah, so not long after I met her, really. So what was the agreement after after that last meeting? Was it for you to systematically go through and make a much more sort of detailed listing, but in her name? Well, not really, because I'd already done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just had to extract my <laughs> list of Marilyn's, the relevant height criteria, and said, those are the Grahams. So it was as simple as I didn't change a single thing. Yeah. Uh, as far as the hill's concerned, we changed two names of hills at her insistence, because she had done some research on the ground. Um, Mam Hale was the name of a hill that she'd been there and couldn't find the name of it. So she you know, asked the local police and said, oh, it's called Ben Breck. Um, so she said, I know I've done research on the ground. Um, so I said, OK, if you've done that. And I thought Mam Hale's not a very good name for a hill. Um, uh, however, when Graham Tops came out several years later, I had to change the hill back to Mam Hale so that Ben Breck could be a Graham Top. Um, and the other one that she, um, I remember her talking about was from uh, which is just across uh, the Corran Ferry, um, which is a nice hill, very prominent as you're coming up the uh, A road over from uh, Glencoe. And she called, convened some sort of meeting of the locals, because there are about five or six different names on the OS maps. Um, I can't remember them all, Mil, Jarrod, Corinam, Muk, or some awful mouthful. Um, <laughs> and anyway, they just couldn't agree amongst themselves <laughs> what it was called. Um, so we, I think we stuck with mine, which is Drimnus Greedon, which is a pretty good name anyway. It's the summit of a ridge. Now, in the last few minutes you've mentioned that she only lived for another year yeah. after the meetings that you had with her. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, could you go into you know, a little bit about sort of what happened to her? I could, yes. Uh, as far as I recall, um, 
the first I remember about it was when I was at work and one of my colleagues knocked on the door of my office and said, oh, um, there's some police here to see you, um, which was a bit of a surprise. So um, they, of course, I agreed to see them. And so um, they explained that uh, this woman, Helen Torbett, as they were talking about her, or Fiona Torbett, had, had disappeared um, and they found her belongings and her contact details. And so they were, um, either eliminating people from their inquiries or interviewing them as potential murder suspects depending on how you look at it and they did have a motive having so they asked me about being a rival list compiler and thought maybe I'd bumped her off so that I would have the grain all to myself. Did she know did they know then that she had they found her body or was she just missing? She was just missing um, in fact I assumed that she'd gone off a walking and fallen and, and died you know that's what I thought but Although they were interviewing me um, about my movements, where I was at that time, what was my car, what was my footwear, and so on. Um, slightly intimidating way. Um, but uh, they seemed to think it was quite possible that she was still alive, because, and I never understood why that was. Um, you know, money hadn't been taken out of her account, as far as I know, or stuff had been left. So, but for quite a while, they, they thought she was alive, and maybe because she'd been reported going off somewhere. Um, I think towards Sky, but I think that report was given by the chap who was eventually done for a murder. So. How long did it take from the time that you were sort of visited by the police for the, the body to be found? And oh, absolutely ages. Was about, it? About a year, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah it I was, didn't know that. And, and they knew exactly where she was, this yeah. B&B in Inverinit, and she was found in, in the garden of that, her last known position. So um, I don't know why police didn't pursue that more closely but it seems to me that they weren't uh, particularly hot on investigating the, the lumps of earth in the grounds of the place where she was last seen. So um, when did they find her body? I can't remember exactly where it was quite quite a long long time afterwards yes. yeah. and then of course uh, it was the son of the people who ran the B&B &B and uh, the, the um, parents knew nothing about it, I understand, cool. but she, they had been alone together um, and this is piercing together what, what happened, so yeah. it was thought that, you know, somehow he made some advances towards it or misinterpreted something and she resisted and he smothered or something, you know, probably not premeditated, but, um, you, know, uh, you know, and then panicked, I guess. Yeah. Did you ever meet her husband yeah. afterwards, after, after no. she, she died or no, not? No further contact. Were, were, were you in um, contact after the last meeting that you with, had with her? Uh, between the time of that and, and the time that she disappeared, or? Uh, she used to phone quite often, yes. Um, so we had quite a few phone conversations. So yes, I probably spoke to her a few times. Yeah. Uh, she, you know, she phoned, she, oh, what do you think about this film? And, and so on. She was, you know, she was pretty good like that, you know, very keen to get the correct data. It's a very sad tale, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Did she, um, has she completed any of the lists as far as sort of Munro's are concerned, do you know, or? She may have done the Munro's, I can't remember. Um, she, she had one um, person she knew quite well in the SMC, but I can't remember who it was, because she was telling me about doing um, Pidina Karikeskik and following the guy book of her and how terribly steep it was and how awfully dangerous it was, uh, which gave me an insight. I hadn't climbed it at the time, but, and it is steep, you know, so, uh, but she obviously found that a, a quite difficult and a bit scary, I think. So, understandably, she was, you know, um, a bit wary of doing big hills on her own. I think um, I mentioned before. I, th I think it's quite good of you to, um, you know, offer to uh, for, for the list to take on her name. But that was before her death. But in some regards, it's it's, it's quite an apt memorial, isn't it? To Absolutely. Her? So after she died, it seemed even more fitting, really, that we should carry on to use her name. Um, and that's what. So I had no hesitation in doing the tacit tables and booklet about about the grains and change it back to anything else because it was yeah a memorial to. To memory, really. Well, if we move on a little bit, um, Alan, many thanks for mm -hmm. sort of giving details about um, uh -huh. about uh, Fiona. Um, but if we now move on, because um, the listing was reprinted within Tacit, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, there was a second edition, wasn't there? Yes. Incredibly, the Grahams have never changed in, you know, 224, uh, always has been. Um, so it um, it was up updated. Um, I don't think the new Donald's changed either. We must have sold out. I know <laughs> <laughs> we did sell out of the murders. Yes. Um, I know what happened. Yes, it was a bit annoying. Um, 
Dave left my name off the cover <laughs> <laughs> of the Great New Dance, which, of course, didn't help given the <laughs> genesis of the list, you know, because it was obviously my list and my data. He just completely <laughs> fucked it off. Yeah, it's really sad. I've forgotten about that. <laughs> so the second edition does actually have my name on the front. Well, what I could uh, do, Alan, when we make this live on YouTube, I'll, I'll send Dave a, Dave a direct link, and I'll tell him to go into... We're on the around the 20th minute now wow so i'll say access 20 minutes mr hewitt and see right. see what mr dawson says, says oh. about you <laughs> well our time must be pretty much up then. <laughs> well just just to wrap it up mm -hmm. um what may be quite nice is to um bring it on a little bit to um you know the people that are that are now going out and seriously bagging grahams because yeah. those numbers are increasing aren't they oh yeah in fact i think we're just up to 99 um so i still maintain the list of uh, Grahamists and um, of course in my flush of enthusiasm after um, agreeing with uh, Fiona that we've got this single definitive list, I thought ah, I should tell the SMC about this, you know, they obviously want to publish it in Monroe Stables, so I wrote off to them and said you I want this, didn't ask them for any money or anything and um, I got a polite reply back from Ken Crockett saying uh, that they weren't really interested and uh, I'll leave it for you and and a Graham to um, take care of the Grahams. So when some years later Donald Bennett came calling and wanted to publish the list of Grahams in Munro's Tales book and offering me £500 for the privilege, I thought, that's very kind, thank you, could have had it for nothing a few years ago if you'd want it. <laughs> um, so um, Yes, I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to wrap it up, um, Alan, I think one of the great joys about the Grahams is that um, it brings the systematic listing of Scottish Hills down to that 2,000 foot threshold. Absolutely, yes. Oh, that's right, yes, the SMC, so they've now started recording Grahamists as well. So I had thought, well, once they get to 100 Grahamists, then um, I can stop recording them and leave them to the SMC and I can get on to um, recording com Completers of metric lists, which is obviously the direction I'm now moving in. So I've tried to uh, uh, abandon the Grahams, but I, I think we may f prove that difficult. Well, metric lists could be uh, for a future video. Could be, yes, if there's still anyone out there. <laughs> <laughs> but you've completed Grahams, uh, Grahams, haven't you yourself? So yeah, uh, about, congratulations uh, on that. Three years ago, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a good day in the freezing cold. Uh, <laughs> winter yes <laughs> well uh very lastly um alan any other sort of comments concerning the grounds um yeah i although they've not been around for very long and um they've obviously had various names you know they could have been Doherty's, they could have been loves which would have been a terrible name for it, mr hills um they were briefly elsie's they could have been torbert's you know graham's so um it's once a thing gets established, you know, it's somehow it just, I think it's the maybe the blessing from the SMC more than TGO that has sealed it in the public domain now. So that's what's taken hold. So it's, um, I've, my, now that I've found out more about uh, Doherty and all the work he done, he's done, uh, I realised if I'd known about it at the time, I probably would have called him Doherty, as you say, so I'd like to try and revert to that. But, uh, and he was a member of the SMC, so I would have thought he'd be enthusiastic, but these things are tricky to change. People don't like change. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Alan uh, uh, Dawson, it's been um, brilliant to see you again, and uh, many thanks for your time to go over the Graham. So, uh, Alan Dawson, many thanks. Thank you, Mervyn.